Hey everybody, welcome to BH Brewing. We've got a free Saturday on our hands, so you know what that means. Time to brew some beer. Looks like a ball sack. The idea is with this is to just, without you actually using fresh fruit or purees or anything like that, is to try and make a, uh, a beer that is like super fruity. Come on. There we go. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> I fucking over the top there, didn't I? Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, so before we get started, we should probably look what we got in the old box. Uh, purchased this from the Homebrew UK the other day. So uh, we've got a bunch of different stuff. We've got three packs of uh, dry and malt extract light. Uh, this will be the first time I'm actually doing a brew using solely uh, uh, dry malt extract. Every other brew I've done, I've always used a mixture of liquid and dry. So three bags of that, which is quite nice. We've also got some uh, malts for steeping purposes. Um, so I've got some Pilsner malt. Uh, they're a nice light kind of colour to it. 2.5 on the EBC, 1.5 on a lover bond. So that's perfect. And also for steeping, I've got some Munich malt, which is a little higher, a little more colour, uh, around 15 on EBC and 6.2 uh, on the lover bond scale. So they'll give us a nice light colour to our beer. Finally, we have our hops. Get these out. We're going to be using four different hops for this one. Um, now, the first hop we're going to be using is uh, El Dorado. Uh, I've heard good things about this hop. Um, very, very nice flavours. But what I have heard also is that it's better when it's used with other hops. So, like a Citra or um, a uh, Galaxy, one of those hops. Um, now, I've never used this hop before, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes but it's a very, meant to be a very fruity uh, hop. You see that's kind of what we're going for with this beer. Uh, I've also got some Azaka pellets, uh, so Azaka hops. Again, that kind of tropical fruit, bit of citrus in there as well. Um, and I hope I'm gonna pronounce this right, I might not be able to, but this is a Moteka, or Moteka, I'm not sure which. It's a New Zealand hop. Uh, translation, I believe, means motorbike. Um, so again, that's kind of a more tropical, florally as well, uh, with hints of citrus in there. And then finally, this is a hop I've never even seen, let alone used before. Uh, this is a South African hop called Southern Passion. Uh, again, it's meant to give that real fruity flavour as well. So, we have four hops that are going to give us, hopefully, a really fruity uh, IPA. Uh, so, um, the idea is with this is to just, without you actually using fresh fruit or purees or anything like that, is to try and make a, uh, a beer that is like super fruity. And I've done it once before. Um, I made uh, this one, which was I uh, called Challenging Nelson. Did a label for it and everything. Back when, you know, it was just chucking money at it, <laughs> making labels and stuff. I can't be asked to do that anymore, so I don't really keg all my stuff. But yeah, nice looking bottle anyway. Uh, so this was uh, Challenging Nelson IPA. And for this one, I used Challenger Hops, um, Nelson Sauvignon Hops, which is easily one of my favorite New Zealand hops. Um, and I think I also used, there was another hop in there. I cannot remember it off the top of my head. But that turned out to be an amazing, beautiful, fruity beer. So I'm hopefully, hopefully, with these hops, we're gonna hopefully end up with the same type of thing. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so I've got my measuring bowl here and uh, my muslin cloth. Uh, and first of all, I'm gonna need to weigh out uh, 1.1 pounds of the Pilsner malt. I just need to reset that after putting the muslin bag on it. Okay, so let's pour out. Uh, pound and a half of this. Well, pound and a, one pound one is effectively what I'm looking for with this. Come on! Should have cut the old bigger, but it always makes a mess when you put it away anyway. the malt, that's in, uh, and now I need to do the same with the Munich malt. Okay, let's reset to zero, and I can put half a pound in with this. There we go. Okay, so there's our Pilsner malt and our uh, Munich malt in there. Uh, should fit in there lovely. Yeah, we'll just uh, 
do is just shake off all the dust. This helps it out so I don't end up with a load of shrub at the bottom of my kettle. So shake off the excess dust, tie that up, not too tightly. There we go. And then that is ready to go into our kettle. So I've measured out uh, three gallons of water and uh, in we'll go with that. So we'll fire that bad boy up, there we go, get it into position, lovely, get our steeping bag, and I'll just dunk it like a tea bag effectively, which takes on all the water, lovely job. All we need to make sure we're doing with this is make sure it's not sticking to the bottom, but uh, we'll leave that in there <coughs> for around 20 minutes or so. Um, once the 20 minutes is up, we will uh, remove it and then add our dry malt extract. Okay, so while our water is uh, coming up to temperature, we're just going to uh, measure out our hops. So uh, we need about uh, 0.3, I think I've roughly got it. Let's just see. There we go, 0.3 of a Zaka, that's absolutely perfect. So let's place that to one side. And then we also need to get out uh, 1.3 of uh, Eldorado. So I'm measuring thing for that. Let's pull some of these out of here. Yeah, oh, wait. I want me to uh, just reset that before I do that. I'm nearly a rookie error. There we go, look at that. Like a perfect weight. So that's 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. Uh, what I think I will do uh, with the Eldorado hops is probably put that in a muslin bag so when we transfer it to our fermentation vessel, what we're not ending up with is loads of uh, flop. Uh, hops floating in the beer because uh, it just can be a pain in the ass when you go to siphon them out. So, put them in a muslin bag, still got all the flavour in there, but won't clog up our fermenter. Okay, we're also going to measure out while we're waiting our uh, 15 minute additions and then our Whirlpool, Whirlpool additions. So, uh, 0.5 of a Zaka for this one, for a 15 minute edition. There we go, that's 0.5 of a Zaka. And then we'll do the same uh, for the Eldorado, although I do need a bigger pot for that, so handy. I've got all these these pots, a lot of them are just takeaway pots that you get given, so they uh, do come in handy when measuring out hops. Uh, so I'll reset that one, zero that off. There we go, 0 0.5, lovely. So that's 0.5 of the Azaka and 0.5 of the Eldorado for our 15 minute hops. And now we just need to do our uh, late additions. So it's pretty much an ounce of everything. So I'll measure out an ounce of the Azaka. There we go, that's an uh, ounce of Azaka. So what I've got, I've got these in order. I don't know if you can really see that at the back here, but so this is our 60 minute edition, 15 minute edition, and then these will be our Whirlpool editions. So there's an ounce of Zaka in there, so we're going to use an ounce of Moteca. An ounce of Moteca in here. And these vacuum sealed packs to try and get the bloody bastard things out. Come on, you fucker. Yeah, it's very smart. more bits than actually whole hops there. I see there's a blockage. Come on. There we go. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> I'm fucking over the top there, didn't I? Jesus fucking Christ. The fucking hops everywhere. What a disaster. Fuck me. Right, take some of these off. <laughs> Shitty death. Right, come back to me in five minutes while I've cleaned this mess up. Okay, so I've cleaned the mess up a bit. Oh, <laughs> a disaster, went up fucking everywhere. So now we just need to use a uh, measure out our uh, final hop, which is the Southern Passion. So let's uh, put this bad boy in. So again, we'll go for another ounce of uh, this Southern uh, Passion. Just want to make sure what happened didn't happen last time happens again. Oh, nearly. There we go, there's an ounce of that. Lovely job. 
So there's our Whirlpool editions there. So that's the Moteca, the Southern Passion, and the uh, uh, what was the other one? And the um, Zaka. So all I need to do now is measure out the uh, an ounce of El Dorado. Again, I'll do that in a bigger pot. Zero this off. Ounce of El Dorado. There we go, so that's an ounce of Eldorado. So we've all our hops measured out now and uh, we're ready to proceed. Okay, so our grains have been steeping for 20 minutes now. So I've just turned this down while I get this out. Um, I'm gonna try and get this out really without squeezing it too much because we don't want all the tannins to come out. So let's grab that. Fuck me, that's hot. And we'll just let this drain. Uh, drain off all the excess liquid. Again, we don't want to squeeze it because we don't want the tannins going in there. So I'll just hold this there really, just let all the, uh, the water drain out of it. Looks like a ball sack. Okay, so we're just waiting for our uh, kettle to get up to the right temperature, get it to a boil, and then we'll be adding in our lovely dry malt extract. Two bags of this, so two kilograms, which are, I think I uh, equate is about 4.4 pounds around there. So those two are going. So it's not going to be a massively strong beer. It's going to be around the 4% region. Um, I wanted something that was sessionable, you know, like a lot of the brews I make are kind of like 5 or 6%. I mean, they're, they're, they taste fine, and I don't mind, I quite enjoy that type of percentage, but sometimes you just want a beer that you can have, you know, after work, it's not too strong, um, that's not gonna land you on your ass. So uh, that's what we're gonna go for today, a nice sessionable beer with this one. Okay, so our kettle is up to the ball. I've now turned it completely off, because the last thing we wanna do is have this sticking. So I've got this now, I'm just gonna slice it open and try and get it as quick as possible so we have no clumps. As soon as this gets to air, it's a fucking nightmare. Any moisture in the air that gets in it, it can be a bitch. Fucking come on, you can. Okay, in we go. Okay, drive it in, go on, get in there. Let's get these bits off the end. See what happens at the end, it starts clumping on the end, which is a friggin' nightmare, which is the only problem with dry malt extracts, you do get that clumping as you can see there, but we've got the dry of it in, so we'll give that a stir. Slice the other one open. Make even more mess as you do. There it goes. Oh shit, I have to went over the bloody kitchen side. Huh? God, I've made a mess. So let's stir that in, make sure we get no clumps. It's bits on the side. I just want to stir along the bottom to make sure it's not sticking. It's not, dry malt extract is not half as bad as when you're using liquid malt extract. That really does tend to stick, whereas dry malt extract is pretty good. It tends to get in there and it's all right. So. Just give that a good stir and then we shall return it to the heat. Okay, so we've uh, put all our dry malt extract in now. Time to fire it up again. And then once this is boiled, we'll start adding our hops. Okay, so our wort's come to the boil. I've got my timer ready on my phone. Uh, as soon as I drop in the first set of hops, then I'll set this going. Uh, I've turned it down just for the minute because generally when I'm adding the hops, it tends to go a bit mental and spill over. So we'll see what happens. Might not do it this time, but... So, in with our first set of hops. No, that's actually all right, it's dispersed quite nicely. Lovely, just give it a stir. And then in with our Eldorado hops in the old muslin bag, and then we'll crank that up. So, let's hit it up. So that's now on the boil. Uh, starting my timer, so now uh, next edition will be in 45 minutes time. Okay, so it's been uh, 45 minutes. Now our time to add in our 15 minute edition. Again, with the uh, Azaka, in we go. And with the uh, Eldorado, in we go. Just nice and in there. Give a good stir. Okay, lovely job. 
Now we just wait another uh, 15 minutes and then we can add our final Whirlpool additions. In go the hops. One, two, and three. Woo hoo hoo, that smells delicious. You can see all the green hops rising to the top. So I'll leave that to stand for five, 10 minutes and then we'll try and get this wart chilled as quickly as possible. Okay, so we moved into the bathroom. Uh, I filled this, uh, this bath up with uh, cold water and five bags of ice. There's not much ice left. And a couple of these muscle food uh, packs, which are very good for uh, keeping the bath cold. So I've just got to put a towel underneath. The reason I put a towel underneath is otherwise it ends up scratching the bath. Um, See, there's a little bit too much water in it, so I'm gonna try and let a bit out. Okay, so I've let some water out. That took a bit longer than I anticipated. Um, so now the idea is we'll just give this a stir, just try and dissipate some of the heat that's in this water. Um, we'll move it back to the bath a bit, try and get these, these packs of ice closer, but the main thing is we don't wanna contaminate the beer now while it's cooling with the, any of the, the water that's around here. So. I have to try our best not to get any water in there whatsoever because that could lead to contamination. So I'll just leave that in there and just move it about a bit because obviously warm water will stay in one place. So move this left and right and we'll get some, uh, get that hopefully nice and cool pretty quickly. Um, ideally within 30 minutes we want that down to a temperature where we can pitch our yeast. Okay, so we've got our measuring bucket here. As you know, when we uh, filled up our kettle earlier, we used three gallons and uh, probably left for the back two now because a lot of it does uh, burn off in steam. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll fill this up to three gallons and then when we're ready, we're gonna uh, add this to our carboy along with our wort to make up about five, five and a half gallons. Uh, and then that should be about the right temperature to uh, pitch our yeast. Okay, so we've got our carboy vessel here, empty of course. Uh, this has had uh, star sand run through it, so that's nice and sanitized, ready to go. And then we've got our chilled wort, which is about the right temperature you want to use. So now all we need to do is uh, put some cold water, first of all, in the carboy. Um, now here I've, and this other bucket, which is probably just out of shot, is a, uh, a bucket full of sanitized solution, which I've got this, uh, funnel sat in, so we'll pop that into there, and then we'll just uh, pour in our uh, cold water, three gallons of this, so in that goes. Okay, so there's our three gallons of cold water in, and uh, now we need to add into the wort. Um, now, something I'm gonna to do today, which I don't usually do, is, is strain the wort. By that, I'm gonna put a sieve here, so we don't get too many lumps and uh, chunks of, uh, of, um, of stuff in the bottom. Now, I don't usually do this, but I thought, well, today, do something different, let's do it. And, and since I've been kegging as well, I don't like to have too much sediment, because and eventually, no matter how hard you try, some of it will end up in the keg, and I want to avoid that. So I've got a, uh, a, a strainer or a sieve sat in the uh, solution, so I'm just going to pull that out now, and then we're going to pour in the wort into the uh, fermenter. Okay, so we're now going to put in our wort. As I expected, we're getting, it's getting a little slow because it's obviously starting to clog up, so I might just uh, need to get a sanitized spoon and just move the trug around in there so it doesn't clog up too much. So I'll just sanitize this bad boy, and then we'll uh, come back and just remove some of that trouble back so it goes in a bit quicker. Okay, you see what we're left with here in the, uh, the top of this sieve here is this kind of hoppy residue, also probably uh, some of the grains that got through the bag from the steeping grains, so I'm keeping them out. I think the majority of the uh, hop flavour has already come through into the wort anyway, so I'm not overly worried with that. Um, we're almost at the level we want to be. I'm just going to have to top up with a bit more water so we get to the level we want, and then we're ready to pitch our yeast. 
Okay, so we've topped up our carboy with the amount of water that we require for this brew. Uh, now all we need to do is pitch the yeast into it. So we have our yeast packet. Uh, for this one, you're using Safale US05. Really nice, clean yeast. Used it a couple of times. If I have a preference between this and Mango Jacks uh, M44, tend to go with Mango Jacks, but it was just in a bit of a tight time scale. Couldn't get Mango Jacks in a couple of days, so had to go for the Safale, which is not a bad thing because it is a decent yeast. Uh, I've had my uh, scissors sanitized as well. Let's just shake that off. And obviously, this has been sanitized, so we'll just cut the corner of this and then uh, pour it into our wort. Job, so in we go. Try not to spill it anywhere. Try to do it so you can see it, but a little difficult. There we go, looks like that's all in. Now I've got a stopper in here somewhere. I'll dig down and find it. Oh yeah, know you're in there somewhere. There we go. So usually when you're doing this sort of thing, you'd you'd have one of these bad boys and uh, airlock and use one of these. But it tends to be with a lot of the beers that I do, um, they end up following up into this. So nowadays I just I've got a, a blow off valve in here. Um, I tend to use instead and just put the blow off valve into a like a cup of uh, this sanitized solution and that does just just as well and I don't end up with clogged things of these and you know wart everywhere so these are good if you if you don't experience uh, too much uh, craze in the head on it but I tend to so that can stay in there but we've got our uh, stopper here so we'll put this stopper on and then we'll just give this yeast a nice shake make sure it's uh, get in there all aerated nicely and then we'll be ready to uh, to leave it to uh, to ferment. So we'll just give this a nice shake, make sure you get down in there. Helps if you've got a towel down as well, because A, it stops the mess going everywhere, which pleases the missus. And uh, you can rock it on this towel floor without damaging your cowboy, which helps. Oh, get in there, go on. Oh, okay. I'm happy with that, it's definitely in there. You see at the moment we're in about uh, between 72 and 74, probably won't be able to see that from where you are, but yeah, there's a temperature gauge on here and we're about 72 temperature at the moment. So it's gonna go into a dark, cold cupboard, so I don't need to worry about that too much. So uh, that's where we're gonna move this bad boy now, into a dark, cold cupboard. Okay, so here we are. Here is our lovely wart. That's how it's the yeast pitched into it uh, and it's obviously got a blow-off tube attached to it that goes all the way to uh, some solution at the back there. So uh, now all we've got to do is uh, is wait. Okay, so there we have it. That's our juicy, fruity IPA made. Uh, now we've just got to wait a long two weeks until we can uh, look at it again. Two weeks time we'll be dry hopping it, so make sure you check back in two weeks when we'll be doing that. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button down there. And also if you're interested in more videos like this, hit the subscribe button down there. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Get that up, yeah.